guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share my entire Louis Vuitton purchase history. The other day, I was thinking about how much money I could have spent with Louis Vuitton since it's the first luxury brand that I kind of start to dip my toes into and it's certainly the brand that I've shopped with the most in the past several years and just having reviewed um, how much I paid for what items on my online account on the Louis Vuitton website, it looks like I spent about a little over $20,000 over the span of eight years. And while that maybe is not a lot of money to some people, it certainly can pay for half the part of a new car. So I want to share my full purchase history with you today in hopes that if some of these are some items that you've been thinking about buying, um, it's kind of like a quick mini, quick turnaround uh, review for each item that I've uh, spent money on before. Um, so hopefully you'll find this helpful if you're considering buying some of these items on my uh, full purchase history or maybe you will just find this interesting. So hope you guys enjoy this video and let's go ahead and get started. So a disclaimer here on $20,000 over uh, past eight years, I'm just looking at uh, what I paid for at the time of the purchase. So if I were to go back and recalculate all this in the current price point, I'm sure it's a lot more than $20,000. So I have my account pulled up on the Louis Vuitton website. In case you guys didn't know, um, they have consolidated all of your purchase history, I think associated with your email address. So if you've been buying items under the same email address, just like I have, then you probably also have consolidated purchase history. Um, this applies to all of the stores outside of the United States too. So I have access to the items that I've also bought while I was in Europe as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first item that I bought from Louis Vuitton is the Favorite MM. Um, now, this was my first luxury item that I didn't buy from an outlet store. I have bought a couple items from like Gucci or like uh, Ferragamo at the outlet stores, but this was my first full price purchase. Um, so I initially went into the boutique thinking that I'll want a Louis Vuitton Neville full. But I was shopping with my mom that day and um, she said I should get a more youthful looking bag that's for like going out instead of buying a bag that's went for old people. Um, I really shouldn't have listened to her and I should have bought what I went into bought uh, to begin with because I ended up hating this bag um, because like the crossbody strap wasn't adjustable. If I wanted to take it off the bag, um, it didn't have the hooks on both ends. One side was like making a loop that you had to thread the strap through one of the slit holes and it was really complicated. And um, I think my bag was also defective because there is a magnetic strap on the flap that's supposed to keep the bag secure, but it was so loose and I didn't know this was a defect back then, but thinking back on it, I think it was a defect. Um, every time I drive and I'll make a turn, the bag will kind of slide in the passenger seat and it will spit out all of the content of the bag. So I think in about two years, I ended up selling this bag because I hated it so much and I was over, over it. Despite the fact that I did not like this bag, it was the only bag that I had and I did still use it whenever I uh, went out on dates and stuff like that. But I honestly think if I had bought Neverfull then, um, it would have been a better choice for me. So the next bag that I bought, I actually bought it in Paris. And honestly, I bought this bag because I was in Paris. Um, I knew nothing about this bag. It wasn't a bag that I wanted. Um, I bought it because I was in Paris. So the, the bag that I bought next is the Alma BB in the Epi leather, black leather, and the silver hardware. Um, honestly, if I still kept this bag, I would use it um, because I think the top handle kind of a bag I really love using, especially if I'm going out. And black bag is what I really usually like carrying. So it's a bag that I would have continued to use if I kept it, but I don't regret um, selling the bag when I did, and I don't intend to repurchase this. So the main reason I didn't like this bag is because the strap that it came with was an adjustable, and whenever I wore it crossbody, I felt like the bag was really awkward in shape when it leaned against me because it's triangular shape. It will lean against your body when you wear a crossbody. And back then I really didn't know how to carry a mini bag. And this is a very small bag compared to, you know, tote bags or whatnot. So it really didn't suit my lifestyle then uh, because I didn't quite know how to handle a mini bag, if you will. Um, so I ended up selling this bag not too long after I've bought it in 2015. And I got 
maybe $900 for it or something like that. So I didn't lose too much money on it, but it's a bag that I could have done without purchasing. And then the next bag I didn't end up buying until 2017, which surprises me. Um, but yeah, I bought this bag in 2017 again while I was in Paris. I actually was in Paris with my mom and as you can imagine, we went nuts shopping. Um, this was the only bag that I bought, but my mom bought two different bags while we were on the trip. So this is the Speedy B25 in the monogram. Um, I initially went into the boutiques looking for Speedy B25 and the Dummy Event prints. But after trying it on, um, I was wearing like a black hoodie, really casual outfit that day. It just didn't look good. But when I tried on the monogram, it looked much better. So um, although I intended to buy this bag when I walked in, what I should have bought instead is a regular Speedy 25 without the bandolier. Um, I just really don't like the look of the straps that runs down on the side of the bag. Um, I think I would still like to get my hands on a Speedy, whether it's Speedy 25, 30, vintage, or newer version um, in the future. But the bandolier, I think I can do without. I just don't like how it looks with the strap and the top handle. So just a personal thing, but I also ended up selling this bag. And then the next item I bought in 2018, so a full year after I bought my last bag, is a six ring key holder. Now, this is something that I still own to this day, but a different version of it. Um, what I got back in 2018 was a uh, one with rose ballerine lining. And while I use this item basically on a day-to-day -day basis, and I still use it every day, um, the one I have now is just a plain brown leather inside and the rose ballerine lining while it was pretty um it wore pretty quickly and i think i got tired of the pink color really quickly and as i sold this item i thought to myself i want to buy it again but in brown which is exactly what i did about two years later and then the next item i bought um i'll take a pause here so so far I've introduced four, four different items that I've bought um, up until this point, and I've sold all of them. Notice the trend here. So the next item I bought was also a couple days later in 2018. So the six ring key holder I got in Rose Ballerine, I, that was an online purchase. And this purchase I made at um, the Saks Fifth Avenue location in uh, Buckhead area here in Atlanta. And what I got was a graceful PN. Um, this bag, I think, to this day, could be very uh, easy to care for, kind of easy to use kind of a bag. Good bag for you to have if you like shoulder bags. But for me, this bag ended up not working out for, I think, two different reasons. One, PM was too small. I should have gone with an MM. Um, when I tried it on, the PM looked to be right size, but it didn't quite fit as much stuff as I wanted, wanted it to, so maybe MM would have been a better choice. And two, the shoulder strap is way too short and there's not a way for you to adjust the shoulder strap. So compared to even Neverfull, the strap and how the bag heads against your um, armpit, it's not very comfortable, especially if you wanted to carry this during winter time, it would be a no-no. So I ended up also selling this bag um, within I think the same year, within the same year. So within the couple months of having it, I knew quickly that it wasn't going to be a keeper, so I sold it. Um, and I think I put the money towards my husband's wedding band. And then two months later, I um, actually bought this just right after the price increase, you know how like, a lot of the luxury brands do their price increases in the springtime. So I have been eyeing this bag because it's been something that I've want, been wanting to buy for years. And after the price increase, I finally decided to take the plunge. It's the Neverfull MM, which is a bag that I still have uh, with the red interior lining. So I bought this online and when it came to me, um, it was in perfect condition, so I decided to keep it. And it's still a bag that I still have uh, four years later. I don't use this quite as often as before anymore because I much prefer to carry the patina away, which is a lot more comfortable than uh, the Neverfull in my opinion. But it's still a bag that I enjoy carrying, especially if I need to carry my laptop and stuff like that for uh, carrying my work stuff. 
Next item that I bought, it looks like 2018 was a year of splurge. I went through a lot of like job related stress that year, so it clearly shows on my purchase history. So um, when I went in to buy the Graceful PM uh, in the store, never full MM was an online purchase. So when I went into the Saks uh, boutique, I was working with a sales associate and I told her that I was looking for also push that accessoire. And she said, I don't have one, but if I get one, I'll give you a call. And she called me a week later and I went and purchased it. This bag I did keep for a couple of years. I think I sold this in 2020. And back when I bought it, it was only $525. Now, if I kept this, would I use it? Yeah, maybe, but I just thought the dimensions of the bag was a little awkward. It's too long and too narrow in terms of width. So it was really hard for me to fit in the items. I knew it had the capacity to fit more than I was able to put in there. And for me, it was just not an easy to use kind of a bag. I much prefer to use my Gucci Marmont Super Mini, which is a lot smaller bag versus this one. But clearly, I prefer the Gucci Marmont Super Mini for a reason and not this one. So I decided to go ahead and sell this also um, maybe a year later. But um, it wasn't a bag that I really enjoyed using. It stressed me out to use it, so I went and sold it as well. So the next one that I have on my purchase uh, history is not something that I kept for myself. It was a present for my mom while I was in um, Finland for work training. It's the Big Room Wallet in the Empreint Leather in the beige uh, colorway leather. Bought this for 475 euros, um, which is a steal compared to how expensive these are nowadays. And it was my mom's birthday present. And along with this, I also bought a birthday present for myself because my mom and myself, we're both July babies, so our birthdays are not too far apart. This is a birthday present for myself. It was a medium ring agenda in the monogram canvas. Um, this was with the new monogram canvas and I bought it for 420 euros, which is a steal again compared to how expensive these are nowadays. And um, I think I was too afraid to use it as something I carry to work every day. And um, just the inserts that went into the agenda was too small for me. Now I finally have my agenda system figured out. So now I have the Louis on desk agenda that I use every day at my desk. And that fits my planner style much better. But it took me several years to figure that out. So I made a mistake of using, trying to use rather the medium agenda didn't work out and I sold it I think later that summer. And then finally the stressful year of 2018 is over. I had bought one, two, three bags and two small leather goods during that year and took a break until mid-year 2019. So going to 2019, uh, I only bought one item and that was the Dami Event Key Pouch. This item I still have and I still use if I need like compact wallet that holds a lot of cards so it's perfect for when I'm going out. It fits well into my Gucci Super Mini um, so I carry both of them kind of together in pair and I paid $219.35 including uh, taxes. I did order this online and then for 2019 that was all I bought and moving forward then to 2020 um, this was when the pandemic has first hit so online shopping was all we were able to do and um, I think I tried a whole bunch of stuff and a whole bunch of stuff didn't work out and uh, there was a lot of returns. Okay so the first thing I bought this was supposed to be my birthday present and I had seen this on Jerusha Couture here on YouTube and I loved how it looked on her so I wanted to give this a try. It's the double zip pochette. It has the reverse monogram uh, on one side. It has a regular monogram on one side and it's like the uh, kind of blown up uh, monogram uh, printed on each side. Got it for $1,391 uh, back in 2020. And when I got this bag in the mail at home, it was in such terrible condition. It didn't take me more than five seconds to decide that this was going back. Um, it also wasn't as 
big as I was expecting it to be. It was way too small for um, my day-to-day -day essentials like my phone, keys, wallet, lip gloss, whatever. So it was a quick and easy decision. I decided to return it. And then shortly after that, I ordered something else online, uh, the mini pochette accessoire and the Dami Ben. Um, I got this online as well, only only for $390.55 then. Now it's ridiculously expensive and it's no longer worth it. Um, even back then, um, because I had spent about $400 on this, I like unpacked it and everything. I kept it for about a week and I looked at it um, and it just sat on my shelf for the entire week I had it, decided to return it. I really thought for something that will just live inside your handbag. $400 was a little too much money for me to swallow. And I just didn't think I would enjoy using it. And I stand by that still. Um, I think it'll be a good kind of an item to have, but there are a bunch of other alternatives and it's not something that I really would get a lot of value out of, which is hilarious because I spent, you know, $200 or $60 on the six room key holder, but I don't mind spending that much money on the key holder. So who knows my, what my logic is. And then the next item, finally, after having tried the zip pochette and the mini pochette, I decided to get something that I knew I was going to get some use out of, and that's the monogram card holder for $230.05. And I did use it a few times, but now I'm realizing that I barely ever use this because I use my key pouch as a wallet and it holds a lot more stuff. Thickness is about the same. Um, I honestly don't use this and I might let this one go in the very near future. Nothing wrong with it though, just doesn't fit my style of my wallet needs. And then after that, uh, 2020 was a year that I worked a lot. I was working 60, 70 hours a week while I was home uh, working in a technology job. I was miserable and I wanted a bag. So <laughs> towards end of October, I decided to order a Pusha Matisse for $2,180. $18.60. Um, if you guys haven't seen my Pusha Matisse horror review video, I will link it up here or there. Um, I ordered this online. The box came in completely destroyed and the bag was in horrible condition. So I decided to bring this in to the Linux Square in Bucket Atlanta and exchange it for a new one. I inspected seven different bags and settled for one that was in reverse monogram. I also don't have that bag anymore, um, but I enjoyed using it for a while. So maybe that worked out for a while. So I exchanged a Pusha Matisse that I ordered for Pusha Matisse in reverse monogram. And back then, I don't, I think they're about the same price now, but back then when I purchased it, the one in reverse monogram was a hundred dollars more. So I paid the difference uh, when I, returned it and got the reverse monogram one in boutique. And that was it for 2020 and 2021. Um, this year we went through a lot of family changes. My husband decided to leave his job um, and we were on just my income for the entire year and found out I was pregnant also. So <laughs> I sold a lot of my bags and uh, bought some stuff and also ended up letting go of a lot of things because we need the money. But before that happened, I had sold my Louis Vuitton puzzle bag. Um, honestly, was just kind of tired of that bag and wanted something like really cute and compact. So what I got, of course, was the Nano Speedy. This is kind of like the older style without the removable strap and it didn't come with a pretend vachetta either. Yeah. Along with that, because I had the extra budget from having sold my Louis Vuitton puzzle bag, um, I also finally got the six ring key holder with the brown leather interior. The Nano Speedy, I ended up selling fairly quickly um, because there was so much wear from the little handle and all the leather tabs. And my essay had told me that she wasn't sure whether that kind of wear wouldn't happen again. So. So I will also link that video somewhere in the cards now because I have talked about that in one of my videos previously, why you shouldn't maybe go for the Nano Speedy. So before I got my hands on the Nano Speedy, um, I actually had ordered the Palm Springs Mini Backpack thinking that's actually what I wanted instead of the Nano Speedy. But um, I ended up returning it after trying it at home because I um, really didn't think the backpack was 
up to par to my standards. It felt really flimsy. It didn't really feel like it was a bag that was worth over $2,000. Um, I spent $2,129.30 on the bag and it went straight back to the um, to the warehouse because um, I bought this online. And then the next purchase I made um, was for one of the pre-love purchases I, I have made, which was the small agenda. I forget when I specifically bought the small agenda from, but I did get it from uh, eBay for I think $180 and I'm ended up selling it for about the same amount of money later that year. Um, so I got the agenda refill from the Louis Vuitton website for $68.48. And if you're also considering buying the agenda refill, don't do it, it's not worth the money. I will go for a different agenda refill that's maybe like a quarter of this cost, maybe 10% off this cost. I, like for me, I just didn't think it was anything special. And then that's it for 2021. I have a couple more items remaining. The items that I bought in the year of 2022. So the year is 2022. I have just given birth to my son a couple months ago and I'm stuck at home, not working, bored out of my mind and I just had gotten paid my bonus for the year that I worked in the past. We still don't have a lot of money because I'm on single income but I told my husband I deserve a push present so I'm gonna get something for myself and the Petit Noe is what I bought with my bonus money. Um, I paid $1,690.60 for it. Petit Noe quickly became my favorite Louis Vuitton bag that I've ever tried um, because of the adjustable strap and how spacious it is. And I honestly prefer to use my Petit Noe over my Neverfull every single time. The only thing is that it doesn't fit a laptop. So if I need to carry a laptop, I will go use the Neverfull, but otherwise it's Petit Noe all the way. I've carried um, milk bottles for my child, uh, baby food, clothes, dirty diapers, everything in it. And I absolutely love it. And to try it out with the Petit Noe, I also had ordered the Neo Noe um, MM with the black trim um in the monogram canvas after trying out both i also do have a video on that so i'll link it up above so you guys can watch that if you're interested um while the neon noe felt a lot more luxurious i just knew that opening would drive me crazy for me to use and it was way too restrictive on how much stuff you can put in the bag so i knew the petit noe was better choice for me and i still stick by that. My husband also agreed that the Neo Noe was a better, more luxurious looking bag, but he understood that I would much prefer the Petit Noe as well. So I'm glad that I returned the Neo Noe and kept the Petit Noe and I still think that's true. Okay, now moving on to the last item that I have bought from Louis Vuitton. This is only from about six months ago, back in April. What I got was the desk agenda cover and the monogram. So they had not have had the desk agenda in the monogram especially. The listing was completely gone. Now it's back again. Um, it was gone up from the website for the longest time and I knew that people were like well, dying to get their hands on it. But now you, it looks like you can just place in cart and buy it however, whenever you want. Um, but I have paid, but I've spent $663.40 on this agenda. And like I said, it took me several years to realize what kind of planning and planner um, agenda style I prefer. I use this um, agenda cover with my Hobonichi nail. Uh, this, uh, this, that's an A5 size for work and personal uh, planning, journaling, and things like that every day. And that fits me perfectly. It has also saved my agenda from being soaked in water and soaked in coffee at least twice by now. So do I absolutely need this agenda cover that costs more than $600? Absolutely not. But do I love it? Absolutely. So as you guys have noticed, um, I have bought a lot of stuff in the past, but really the items that I have kept are from the years 2019 and forward with the exception of my Neverfull, which is from 2018. So I think the lesson here is that one, uh, be careful where, you're, where you spend your money and two, maybe try out and figure out what your preferences are and what your style is before you decide to take the splurge on an item that's expensive. But 
Three, don't be afraid to kind of experiment because a lot of these items that I ended up selling, I got most of my money back. All you have to do is just wait like two years before you sell your items because the price increases are real. So anyway, um, that was kind of long and chatty video about my full Louis Vuitton purchase history. Let me know if you guys have any questions about any of these specific items. I'll try to remember and see what it was like to have those items in my collection and I'll hopefully I'll be able to help you out. So thank you so much for watching such a lengthy video and I'll see you in my next one.